my name's Krish, and um, I'm a man on a mission. Um, because I'm a mentor to men who are on missions. So I want your help tonight. I want you to help me track down a really rare species. Instinct? No. <laughs> no heckling. Um, <laughs> a really rare species that um, doesn't show up very often. It's kind of one of those rare things that you look out for. And uh, it kind of sometimes shows up at events like this, but not very often out there. It's called a conscious man. Anyone out there ever seen one of those? Yes. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. Um, now, I, I kind of got onto this subject because I met a remarkable young woman about nine months ago. A young woman called Esther, who is 18 years old, and she's one of those remarkable 18-year-olds. Really conscious for her age. Really wonderful, intuitive, big-hearted. Really outstanding. She was telling me about her relationship with her father who is a homeopath, he does meditation, he teaches meditation. And um, so, you know, one of those people you'd think would be an enlightened man or a conscious man. And she was telling me that her mum and dad were split up when she was very young, and in the 10 years prior to that, or 10 years post that, she would go and spend time with her dad and his new wife. And his dad, sorry, her dad and his new wife lived in a four bedroom house there was the two of them, the lady's two sons, and her. So you think four bedrooms, four people. But somehow Esther never had a bedroom. So after a few years, said lady's uh, sons left home. One went to university. She said to, uh, said to her dad, can I use the university son's room while he's, not, while he's away? And when he comes back, of course, I'll vacate it. But can I have that? The answer was whatever she says. And the answer was no, because it's his room. This kind of was kind of beginning to make my blood boil a little bit. Not so much at her, but more at kind of this, this is a father with his daughter. Then she told me the guest of resistance, her 18th birthday. Her dad wanted to meet up with her for her birthday, brought a gift. This gift was a matchbox <coughs> with a stone wrapped in a leaf. And what he went on to say was that she was so advanced that she, he knew that she wouldn't want the trappings of like material goods. So he wanted to give her a gift from nature. So he found this stone on this leaf on the way and put it in a matchbox and gave it to her <coughs> for her birthday. And then she paid for the lunch. An 18 year old who had just finished her A-levels paid for the lunch for her dad. And at this point I'm thinking this guy teaches meditation, he's a homeopath. What the hell is going on? And it started, started to get me to reflect a little bit. And I started to kind of look around the world and uh, the world I occupy and like my peer groups and all that kind of thing. And I started to notice that there seems to be a lot of women. I mean, if, if we just look, if you look around now, men, if you can stand up, please. <laughs> so. Yeah, without knocking him this one. So we actually have a reasonable, probably what, 30% of men here? This is not typical. Okay, you can sit down now. If you like, it's a perfect ratio, right? <laughs> <laughs> if you're straight. Absolutely. Which you're not. Yeah, true. <laughs> so the thing is. Like, yeah, absolutely. Anybody who's interested, check them out later. Um, young, free, single, desirable, all that kind of stuff. So I started to look around and I went to this workshop kind of two weeks ago with Shay at Sonia Choquette workshop. 300 people in the room. You know, it, she's an amazing teacher. She attracts like great people. There were less than 20 men in the room. And I would put money on the fact that half of those men there were gay. I would put money on that. Dan Etzer and I run the Brighton Centre of Spirituality. We have about 500 members. 85% women. And I'm sure this isn't anything that any of you ladies can relate to in here. A lot of my female friends are somewhere between 35 and 50. Beautiful, amazing women. Conscious, inspiring. Looking for that partner who can match their energy. Do you think they can find them anywhere? No. 
So this, this kind of, it, it, it's kind of getting me to this point of where are these men? Where are these guys? Some of them are in here, it's great, and I'm not necessarily holding myself up as, as a, an example of one of them, just to be really clear. But the thing is, what's stopping these guys from, from being out here? What's, bring, what's making it a female thing? And for me, it comes back to one thing. And that is, in this society, we live in a society where it's not okay. When you think about what, make, what brings women to this, it's your heart. It's that heart energy, your heart leads you. And I'm an intuitive as well, just like Jolie, and we'll tell you that the, the heart is the, the seat of the spirit in the body. It's the seat of the animating life force in the body. But we live in a society where, you know, at, from a very young age, how many of us have heard young boys being told, be a man, be a big boy, grow up, don't, you know, boys don't cry. So there's this wound that happens straight away that it's not okay for boys to kind of be in touch with their heart. Then time goes on, doesn't it? And, you know, we get to that teenage, those teenage years. And it's no, um, it's no coincidence that the segment of society we label as the most problematic and most troublesome are those 16 to 24-year-old men. 16 to 24 years. Now, we know that boys tend to act out. But what they're craving is connection. What they're craving is that closeness. Closeness with friends. But it's not okay. As soon as you get to that age, it's not okay. So they act out. And that's where the side doors come in. They either act out homicidally or suicidally. And it's no coincidence that that segment has the highest rate of suicide of any segment through society. And the problem is, guys, we exist in a society where there are no rites of passage. There's nothing that says it's okay for you to transition from being a boy to an adolescent to a man. And where's the role modelling? I don't know. I've either, I've either, I see one of two types of guys. The one I had outlined earlier, which is what I call the spineless wimps, they are the ones who, Marion Williamson says that men have come here to do a, ma a major in masculine and a minor in feminine, and vice versa. So the spineless wimps are the ones who have fallen flatly into their feminine. Anyone ever seen any of those? <laughs> yeah, and to be, to be perfectly fair, let's get real here, it kind of has that kind of eh, factor, doesn't it? It's not particularly attractive. Mm. It's not attractive. Especially for women. You want guys who are on it. But then, you, then, then we have... Then we have that thing of the guys who are the alphas. What I call the knuckle draggers. You know, because they're dragging their knuckles along the floor. Because they haven't kind of gone beyond Neanderthalism. And they're the ones who are, you know, doing, pounding their chest. You know, me win, you lose. And it comes out of an old paradigm. It comes out of that paradigm of dog eat dog. We have to compete because there isn't enough to go around. I beat, I, you know, we compete, I conquer. And there seems to be this real hole in the middle. Now, I'm hoping that some of the guys I'm seeing here fill that place in the middle. But there isn't a, there isn't a lot, there aren't a lot of us. Which I think some of the ladies will attest to in here, correct? So we need to kind of get onto this thing. So what, it, what is it? Well, the reason why you ladies tend to get it much earlier than us guys is because you have this amazing ability to process parallelly. You can access your head and your heart at the same time. You have this ability to feel and think at the same time. Us, us grots, you know, the men, we're either in our head or in our heart. You know, it's head or heart. So if you imagine that at a very young age, we ha we're in our hearts, and a man, when they're in the heart, it's wide open. It's a beautiful sight to see. They're wide open, open-hearted. But then we teach them that it's not okay to be in your heart. So where do they go? Head. So when you meet someone, when you meet a guy, ladies, when you meet a guy, and you know, they're, first, they're first into you, and they're totally into you, and you kind of think, oh, this is great, but I want a bit more of that drive. And at some point, they're kind of totally into it, and then they get scared, because they're scared that someone's going to trample on their heart. So where do they go? Head. So what we have is this phenomenon of, oh, I'm in my heart, then I jump to my head, and I'm in my heart, then I jump to my head. Heart, head, heart, head. Hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. Ever come across blowing hot and cold? Yeah? So what we need to do is we need to kind of help these guys be able to access both at the same time. Shay used the term inspiring or empowering. The term I prefer to use is true-hearted man. And what we're trying to get to, if you want to know the hallmarks of the conscious man, number one, they're in touch with their heart. They can feel. And they're at choice when they're in their heart. 
most men, and we are, we, we are behind the times, behind you ladies, we don't get it as fast as you do. We're not conscious enough to know what's going on, so we jump to our heads. Guess what, men? That creates separation anxiety for your ladies. That's the thing that causes them to go, ah! And wail on you, all the bits you don't want to deal with. If you're, if you're conscious enough to know, to stand there, present, full-hearted, your presence heals the feminine. And in turn, their feminine presence heals your heart. And it allows you to open up. Number two, they're on their mission. A true-hearted man is on their mission. Guys, if you don't know what you're here to do in the world, go out and find it. Or find a woman who can help you find it, because they have access to their intuition in a way that you don't yet. But you have to be on your mission. That's the number one thing. The, the masculine version of, of being here to give your gifts is about purpose and direction. The feminine is to give love. So that's not to say that all women are just about love and men are just about purpose and direction. We all have our little mix of what masculine and feminine is. But they're on their mission. They're here to give their gifts. They're here to add to the world. And that's what they're all about. The third thing is they live at their edge. I don't know about you, but I, you know, even, even I get told all the time that you know, I teach people and this kind of thing. But I, I get complacent. I have to push myself. We, we have to live to our edge, guys. We have to push ourselves. If we don't, we, you know, we just don't grow. We don't get to give our amazing gifts. We don't give, get to give our amazing gifts. And our gifts aren't just to the feminine. They're also to the younger masculine. This is about mentoring people. I mentor men on a mission because I want people to give their gifts. And I do that whether I get paid for it or not. That's just one of my things. So... Men, if you, want to get, if you want to get your true heart open, number one, get your mission. Figure it out, whatever that takes. If you get stuck, call me. Call lots of people in this room. There are lots of people in this room who can help you with that. Number two, learn to be at choice of when, you, when you're in your heart and when you're not in your heart. Sometimes it's appropriate for you to be in your head to problem solve. Other times you have to be down here. Number three, do the work. You've got to do that inner work to be able to get past that shame and that guilt that comes up from not being able to be in contact with your heart. But there's a role for you ladies as well. There's a role for the ladies in the room. So this is what I want you to co contemplate. Number one, you've got to help your man find their mission. Like I say, you have access to your intuition in a way they don't yet. So help them find it, and help them be, be it and give their gifts. And that's how they give love. Number two, there's an old saying that says, you know, in a marriage, women spend their whole time trying to change the man, and the man spends all their time trying to stay the same. <laughs> Fair? Don't try and change them. Do not try and change them. Help them to grow, help them to get past their blocks, help them to be all that they can be by loving them and helping them, challenging them, but not trying to change them to be what you want them to be. Because if they do, then they go into that feminine thing. Guess what? It's back to... Again. And number three, and here's the most challenging one. And I say this not just from the point of view of women and men, but masculine and feminine. This is the most challenging one. If you're working with a masculine, accept that the relationship is only ever going to come second. Because for the masculine, which is driven to be out there, to build, to create, to be of service, their number one thing is their mission. And frankly, it's the bit that, that we're all attracted to with the masculine. So, you know, if, again, if, it, if the relationship comes number one, we get to... Uh, again, and that's not where we want to be, is it? So, I believe these men are out there. I believe they're all out there, and they're just needing to open their hearts. So ladies, you have a role. Men who are in feminine, you have a role. However you want to put it, the feminine has a role. For us to have a truly conscious world, shifting out of this patriarchy we're in at the moment to something that is much more guided by the, the divine or conscious feminine, we have to have a conscious masculine to hold it. The masculine builds a container for love, the feminine fills it. So, my challenge to you is, can you help me find them? Thank you.
<웃음>